Okay, you guys, this is it. This is the tour of my brand new RV after a year and a half on the road in a 2017 Leisure Travel Van Murphy bed. I ditched that one for, drum roll, a Tiffin Wayfarer 24TW, and today I'm going to give you a tour. Hey guys, it's Robin with Creativity RV, and thank you for your patience while I got this tour together. Like you heard in the last video, I had some family issues that I had to take care of, and my mom is doing great, you guys, so thanks for all of your kind words. I am here writing out this storm, like I said, so come back next week and I will take you with me as I go through a blizzard with 80 degree wind gusts. So if you haven't subscribed already, do and then ring that little bell so you get a notification. But today I'm going to tell you why I chose a Tiffin TW, which is a class C, over my B plus Murphy bed. So here is what it looks like when you walk in the front door. It's a little bit taller than my Murphy bed. It's about five inches longer, I think, and about five inches taller. The most important thing to me was that I had a reliable rig since I'm full time and that I had a separate living area from my bed area. Now this was a total rookie move on my part. You know, I saw that leisure travel van and I thought it would work for me. You know, and it did for a while. It was not a big deal to put the bed up and down, but it wasn't great for me when I just wanted to go crash. It was not great for the cat. He likes this one so much better. What do you think, big boy? Do you like it? I think he does. I think he likes it. And so let me show you guys around and show you some of the things I've done with it. So you can see when you walk in the front door, it's taller, and then it's got this little love seat, which actually turns into a bed. And then up above the cab, of course, is the Class C cab over bunk, which is what makes it a Class C. From the outside, it really doesn't look that boxy, but the bunk is actually huge. And, uh, oh, hold on a minute. I almost showed a shot of the cab over bunk. Now, I am not going to show you guys that because I've got a top secret project going on up there, which I'm super excited to show you guys. Uh, one of the reasons I got this rig is because I wanted to do something with the cab over bunk, so I'll show you that later. But the cab over bunk is huge, and the ceiling height is huge, and it's got some really good storage. So you've got this little couch up in the front. I can use it just fine when the slide is in. Here's a shot of it with the slide in. And then here's a shot of it with the slide out. Instead of using the table that came with it, I found this perfect little hospital table. I'll put the link for it down below. It tucks underneath the couch, which I really had trouble finding something that would work for that because the table that comes with this won't work when the slide is in. It covers up the hole that you stick the pole in. So I needed a desk to work because I used this couch as my desk. You know, and I thought someday I might take the couch out and literally put a desk back here, but I'm not going to because this is working so great. So, one thing that I really like about this is it really seems like a tiny home. It seems huge, especially when you're back in the bedroom, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But up front, I like to actually keep the chair turned around. I got a little hassock up here, which actually has my shoes in it. And there's a little table that goes right there. So I have seating for three in here, where with the other one, I only had seating for two, unless everybody wanted to crawl into bed together. And then across from the couch, I've got this great big kitchen sink, which you can see I put a bunch of spices on and made a hanging basket for fruit and stuff. And also later, I'm going to give you a tour of my organization in here because I learned a lot in my first couple of years on the road. And I did a lot of things differently this time, which work a lot better. So I'm going to show you that. But, you know, it's got a two burner stove and it's got a big round sink, and one thing that I really do like about this is that the cover for the sink splits in two, so 
you have half the counter space if you want it, and it's easier to take off those two halves and lean them up against the counter wall um, so that I can actually use the rest of the sink without having to cover up the sink with the top of the sink. The refrigerator behind me was perfect for these little guys, which you've heard about before. This was the corporate me, and then this is the me I wanted to be until I hit the road, and I did. And then I've got the refrigerator. It actually looks big, but it's not. It's actually smaller than my leisure travel van. No big deal. Um, I'm making that work. And then the most unusual thing about this layout is that the living area is separated from the bedroom area by a hallway. On either side of the hallway, there's a shower and then a toilet with a sink. So what's interesting about this is that the doors open up. One opens this way, the other one opens the other way. So it actually creates a hallway uh, when they're both open that way between the shower and the bathroom, which is cool. The bathroom is little. No, I don't have my composting toilet because it was so jacked that I didn't take it with me, and that's totally fine. I really, really like that the Tiffin has a 40-gallon water tank where the leisure travel van only had a 24 and that water tank is inside it's underneath the bed so i don't have to worry about it freezing as much because the leisure travel van you know it's underneath the carriage of the actual van with some insulation on it it is not inside the basement of the rv but because it's 40 gallons i can actually afford the water for the regular toilet for now and I can use the 40 gallons for drinking water. So I did get a Berkey water filter. I use potable water, and of course the rig has a filter, but I just feel better using the Berkey. The water tastes great. I'll put the link for that below also if anyone's interested. I do keep that in my shower when I'm on the road, and then I just put it up on the counter when I am camping, and I don't have to worry about cooking with it or drinking it because I have 40 gallons. I feel very spoiled. Okay, guys, and then this is the best part. You know, my leisure travel van was in the shop so much that it gave me a chance to look around at other rigs, and I knew that I wanted a corner bed or a twin bed, you know, where the twin beds are across from each other, because I needed a permanent space to go lay down when I needed to and that the cat could lay down in. So I picked the Wayfarer TW24, and by the way, this is new for Tiffin. You might think of Tiffin as, you know, the big, like, swanky Class A that you see going down the road. Well, they just got in the market for these Class Cs, and I have to tell you, the workmanship is great. The customer service, you guys. See this panel right here? That panel controls the lights for the entire rig. Oh, oh, oh! I almost accidentally showed the overhead bunk. Anyway, this panel controls the lights for the whole rig. It wasn't working right. You know, I would turn on the shower and the hallway light would come on like that, right? The bathroom lights wouldn't come on at all. Well, I could have gone to the dealership and waited forever, but instead I called Tiffin directly and lo and behold, a real person answered the phone right away and his name was Brad and he was awesome and he didn't even ask me for my VIN number or my name or anything before he started troubleshooting with me and determined that I needed a new panel and he said, do you feel comfortable popping off the old one and putting on the new one? And I said, absolutely. And he said, great, where are you? I will FedEx the new panel to you and then when you get it, call me and I'll walk you through putting it on telling you night and day, night and day from my last experience. So that was very cool. I digress. Let me show you the bed. Okay, so like a lot of other models like this, there are two twin beds on either side of the end of the rig here. You can leave it as two twin beds with a little nightstand in between, or they had two planks to build it out into a king-size bed. Well, that wasn't working for me because one of the things I didn't like about the leisure travel van was it was just so hard to get out of that bed. <laughs> I swear, you, you know, it's like you need a hook hanging down so you could drag yourself out of it. And when Doug was with me, you know, we were crawling all over each other and the bed took up the entire living room and we were stepping on each other, stepping on the cat, stepping on everything. So it was important for me to still have a hallway and I wanted to be able to get to all of the storage that's back here and also the service bay. Uh, the only plug and USBs available are also underneath the bed and I didn't want to block that. So what I did the very first day I had the rig is I took one of the platforms that holds up the king size bed and took the pieces that make it into a king size bed and cut it 
and got a foam topper that I cut a U-shape out of, and I'm going to show all of this to you later. I'm going to show you how I did it in a video if anyone wants to do it. But basically what it did is it created what I call the nest. And I'm telling you, you get back in there, I've got these little fairy lights that come on at night. Um, I'll put the link for those also. They're solar, and when the lights go down, these lights come on, and there's this ambient lighting out in the rig itself. You have this hallway that goes out you know, into the rig, and it is just so peaceful and so calm and so comfortable. Basically, I still have two twin beds that go into a U-shape that creates almost, I would say, a double-sized bed in the back. So you can lay any direction you want, and I do. And when Doug was here, it was super, super comfortable because he came up when my mom was sick. And as for the big boy, he's got these big windows back there that he can just lay on a pillow. You know, I've got a ton of pillows back there and a bunch of cushy blankets that I just keep folded up until I need them. And overall, it is just such a better rig for me. I mean, if you see the thing side by side with a leisure travel van or even like a road trek or something 22 feet, you really don't see that much of a difference. It's not that big of a rig. I can still park in a regular parking space, you know, too long, but the same width. And it's great going down the road and the cab is great. The navigation system is a lot better and the customer service is better. And you guys, I just love it. I just love it. I really... I thought someday I would get off the road and maybe get a tiny house part of the time. This is my tiny house, and I absolutely love it. Like I said in my book, Be a Nomad, Change Your Life, most of the full-time nomads that I've interviewed say that they switched rigs after their first or second year because you don't know what you need until you're on the road. But if you're looking at going on the road and you're looking at rigs, don't make the mistake I did. I didn't take into consideration the living space that I really needed. And to have a kitchen and a work area and a bed area that are all separate is key, at least to me. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour and be sure to come back on Wednesday because outside here it is really windy. And like I said, I am expecting tonight to be in the beginning of a blizzard with 80 mile an hour winds. Uh, inside of this state park. I think I'm going to be okay, but uh, it's going to be a little bit hairy. So I'm going to take you guys with me on that adventure. Fingers crossed I don't get blown over because the ranger said that's actually uh, one of the dangers up here that that does happen. Until then, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and I wish you all happy travels out there, and be free.